hands and just bless the God that is the same yesterday, today and forever. Did someone pray? Lift your hands, wave it from side to side as you pray in the spirit, thanking the Lord for his faithfulness. Definite encounter tonight. Go ahead and pray. A definite encounter. Definite encounter tonight by the Spirit. Give me an encounter tonight that will change my life in the name of Jesus. I come to the one true God. He said, this is eternal life that they may know you. The one true God. Oh, oh.
blessed that is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who in the name of our God. Now arise, O Lord, will you come to your resting place, you? And the ark of your might And then we will rejoice As we clothe in your righteousness We celebrate your love Nilabashalagosa <laughs> libanamusia Worship him. You're not wasting your time. This is part of the meeting. Take your eyes away from men and just focus on Jesus. We worship you in the spirit. We worship you in the truth. We worship you in the spirit. That's what we've come to do. We worship you in the spirit. We worship you in the truth. We worship you in the spirit. That's what we've come to do. Lord, we worship We worship you in the truth. We worship you in the spirit. That's what we've come to do. We are into the holy of holies. That's where we This is why we are here. We have come with our hearts open, ready to receive from the rabbi of all the ages. We honor you, we worship you, we worship you. We pour our hearts like drink offerings before you. This is Mount Zion. The city of the living God.
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. The Bible declares they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. We thank the Lord for the privilege that he's given. There is never a wasted moment in the presence of the Lord. You can have wasted moments before men, but not before the Lord. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, it says, Brethren, I commend you unto God. Ah, there's such mighty presence in this place. I'm just, I'm just sensing just like an infusion of spiritual power, just impartations of strength happening, impartations. Because the Holy Spirit, whenever he's here, he's here to do us good. I commend you, he says, to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. You have to understand and trust the value of God's presence. One moment in his presence, one moment in his presence can truly change your life. Hallelujah. Never be casual about the house of God. Never be casual about the word of God. Never be casual about an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit has been allowed to find expression. There is no telling how far God is able to lift, to build, to change, to transform. The house of God is not a cinema center. The house of God is more than a lecture room. The house of God is more than a place of disseminating information. It is the house of God, the gate of heaven. What makes the house of God all important is that God is there. Hallelujah. Many things happen when you are in the presence of God. There are healings. There are miracles. The word of God comes to deconstruct faulty belief systems. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, an ideology you may have sustained for a decade that sponsors cycles of defeat in your life. One word accurately explained from scripture can bring you that deliverance. Hallelujah. And then there are impartations. An impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. Whilst you are seated, you see many things happen to us when we're in the presence of God. More than the man who is speaking, there is the God who is walking. Moving from row to row. Moving from place to place. Moving from hall to hall. Searching the intents, the hunger, the expectations of men. And then coordinating words that come to heal, to bless, to deliver. So whilst you are seated here, you will be amazed to know the kind of ascendance that you're having in the spirit. Physically, you may be seated, but in the realm of the spirit, there is an elevation happening to you. It's a law, the law of transformation. The Bible says every time you truly behold, you cannot remain at that level. Now the Lord is that spirit, he says, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then he says, we all with faces unveiled, beholding the glory of God as in a mirror, we are changed into what we are beholding. The word of God does not just tell you what God can do. It brings you into that experience. Why am I saying this? Because you see, routine creates boredom in men naturally. And so lest we get used to just coming to honor a church service, coming to honor a program, it is dangerous to be casual in the presence of God. 
Jacob said the Lord was in this place and I knew not as powerful as his presence is lack of hunger and expectation can make it look as though God was not there I never take his presence for granted no and so every time make it a culture let it be an education that you receive tonight that every moment you have to spend in his presence don't just say i am coming to church don't just say i am coming to hear a man of god don't just say i am coming to honor a meeting that was organized by a ministry it's more than that it is an encounter are we together this is very important I hope you know that this same presence that we seek is also sought after in heaven the same presence that we long for the angels and the saints in heaven live by that same presence it's not an inferior dimension that same presence that is the life-giving factor also in heaven. Please do not be casual about the presence of God. More than healing, more than deliverance, more than people falling under the anointing, the laborious activity of the Holy Spirit transiting people into better and greater expressions of the power the glory the grace of god this is his assignment and i'm telling you it takes a long time to achieve that in the spirit this is why we gather and gather again this is why we listen and listen again this is why we learn and we learn again because it takes a long time to build it takes a long time to produce men of stature I stand, I stand in all of you. I bow, I bow in all of you. I see, I see in all. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you, Jesus, something special, Supernatural about your name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah! Something happens when I mention you are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God. One more time. You are God. From beginning to the end. Help us, O oh Lord, grant us understanding tonight. We open our hearts to learn, to grow, to be built, to be established in righteousness. Spirit of the living God, we pray that the word of God would come with power. And tonight, the spirit and the bride says, come. Come healing. Come lifting. Come transformation. The spirit and the bride says, come advancement come prosperity come fresh fire the spirit and the bride tonight are in agreement 
and we say come in Jesus name we pray amen God bless you give Jesus a big big hand amen praise the name of the Lord please be seated I'd like you to help me celebrate an awesome man of God in our midst tonight a veteran of the gospel apostle Goodheart Kweme thank you let's honor him Koinonia this is a house of honor thank you sir thank you sir such an honor to have him in our midst amen please be seated I honor and celebrate everyone here politicians men of God um, businessmen all who name the name of Christ the Bible says we have all been called with a holy calling hallelujah praise the name of the Lord I just felt stirred in my heart tonight to really reiterate and to remind us that we are as a global family we are a people of vision and we are a people of intention religion is man's quest to find the truth man's quest to find Jesus and many times they come up with all kinds of ways and we have to be careful as we administer the life and the power of God because it is possible to just have the form of religion through the traditions of men and lose the power the presence and the life component may it never be that we get to a point where all we are doing is just a regular spiritual activity without power hallelujah it's important to know why we exist at the beginning of the during the inaugural service i took out time to share with us in great detail and paul said you see this is part of the apostolic ministry he says i will not be negligent to bring you in remembrance of these things although ye know them and are established in this present truth hallelujah you should know you must know why we exist the vision is a system of check and balance it, it defines the coordinates of how we administer the life and the power of God it will always be and remain with respect to the call and with respect to the assignment so that all of the topics the teachings the approach everything comes in honor to the vision in honor to the goal this is how we achieve efficiency in the spirit hallelujah I thought we would have the time to do a quick review on the six points that I gave us but we have to honor the time there's a lot to deal with here tonight is going to be quite an encounter for many of us here hallelujah and so I probably may ask media can we have a minute or two to do that is that possible all right so I hope you can see it they have beautifully expressed it in a way I'll just give you a minute or two to look at it I hope you can see it clearly you have to understand this is the sixfold mandate that we have everyone who is connected to this vision from this city and our global family it's important for you to know why we exist and it's important to know, help you know what we are about let me run it quickly in one minute number one to help actualize the global harvest of souls the mission of souls the global harvest of souls it is it is a global mission that we must not ignore hallelujah that we together with other members of the body we are about the genuine salvation of souls number two to equip and build believers unto maturity unto stature through the revelation of God's word the only way believers can grow and attain maturity is through the accurate exegesis the communication of doctrine doctrine is the course curriculum that builds believers it brings maturity and it brings stability number three God has also helped and anointed and ordained us to be instruments of completion and balance the body of Christ for a very long time has suffered different shades of imbalances that have delved into error 
by well-meaning people and so the lord has raised us graciously and uniquely granted us access into superior dimensions of the counsel of god to the end that we be instruments that with the attitude of love and humility bring the body of christ to a greater sense of completion and balance number four to demonstrate the reality of the love and the power of god through miracles signs and wonders bringing healings deliverances and transformation to men you have to understand this so it shouldn't be a thing of surprise when you see the demonstration of the spirit of the lord in all kinds of supernatural manifestations you have to understand that it is part of the grace and the equipping that we have received it doesn't have to be a miracle service anywhere we are gathered that grace speaks and it answers even now are we together number five to help strengthen the unity of the body of christ as you know i have said it again and again that i am sent to the body of christ and as a ministry even though organizationally speaking we may be a ministry or i, I don't know how we would look at it but then our assignment please keep that scripture there to send to bring unity to the body of christ there is such a state in the spirit called the unity of faith the bible says until we attain that point the unity of faith and finally to become a bridge of hope for visionary leadership and please correct that that is national transformation national transformation media you'd want to just correct that national transformation any listen the bible says we are the light of the world the salt of the earth that means the the benefit of our spiritual encounters must not only help us spiritually but it must be translated into a context that blesses society the church is a blessing and an advantage to society it is an advantage to civilization so if a businessman or a politician a governor or a president or whoever if you sit under this grace it shouldn't just be that it is only your spiritual life that is growing your intelligence as far as leadership and governance must also be affected are we together i believe in the power of influence and god has so honored us with great men and women of influence captains of industry politicians i owe you a duty under god to see that in addition to your spiritual growth you are equipped with the tools by the spirit reference from scripture that can help us to bring the kind of leadership that can transform society neither do men light a lamp it says and to put it under a bushel but you put it on top of the lampstand and it gives light to all those who are in the room that means there were people in the room even when there was darkness confused waiting for whoever is the light hallelujah this is very important we are about this week in week out all of our arms of expression all of the platforms in the ministry work in synergy to the end that this six point vision be achieved if for any reason and by any means we deviate from this then we're wasting our time the grace and the backing of god remains for as long as we are committed to this unified task the bible says write the vision it mandates to make it plain so that he will run that reads it are we together over the next few weeks i am going to be having very powerful and special teachings uh, and these teachings will be along the areas of all the graces that god has so graciously allowed to be at work in my life and in this ministry it is important for you to understand the graces that god has so invested in this ministry so that you can become a partaker but you see grace is administered through knowledge so there must be a, an accurate exegesis of the scriptural basis 
for the reception of these graces it is not just by mere impartation impartation will be fruitless if there is no understanding that supports it it first starts with water before it turns to wine it doesn't start with wine it is first water then it turns to wine are we together and i'm excited about the things that we're going to be learning i am a student of the wisdom of others i am a student of uncommon men and women who have been used by god across the earth over the years some dead some alive and so we are not inventors of these truths it will be arrogant to invent something at this level and and attempt to communicate it to such an intelligent people the things that we teach are not opinions the things that we teach have been tested they have been vetted by the integrity of god proven in the lives of those who have gone ahead of us to the end that we have the certainty of those things that we have believed luke chapter 4 please verse 1 to 4 and then we'll begin our discourse for tonight luke chapter 4 from verse 1 to 4 luke chapter 4 luke chapter 1 please forgive me luke chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4 i meant to say for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us please look up please go back to verse 1 the bible says for every body of believers there are certain spiritual truths that are called most surely believed every truth should be believed but according to the measure of grace and the dimension of the investment of the spirit given there are certain truths that the average person in this ministry should have as a settled conviction can you imagine someone still doubting the reality of healing in a healing ministry can you imagine someone still doubting the efficacy of the blessing of the lord under the ministry of kenneth copeland can you imagine someone still doubting the efficacy of the power of faith under the ministry of someone like Papa Hagin or our father in the Lord Bishop David Oedipo? You, it, it, it's an anomaly. So there are things called the truths that are most surely believed. We're reading to verse 4. Verse 2, please. Even as they delivered them to us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word please celebrate reverend akila and his dear wife <laughs> blessings to you and good to see you sir hallelujah amen even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word verse 3 it says it seemed good to me also here is an apostle saying it is possible for a man to have perfect understanding you can have perfect accurate understanding of all things from the very first to write unto you in order most excellent theophilus why verse 4 please let read in concert one to read that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou has been instructed that you no longer believe it just because you like the man of god teaching it but you catch the revelation of that truth yourself there are many people who believe truths not because they have gotten the revelation they like and they trust the communications of that truth as well meaning as that is it's not sufficient to produce results in your life remember what the woman at the well said come see a man she invited them they came on her invitation but when they encountered Jesus, they told her, they said, we believe not because you brought us. We have tasted of this thing for ourselves. And like a chef preparing a meal to ensure that there is balance, there is growth, there is stature. Life applicable truths that are say amen. amen. So tonight we are discussing the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom revelation chapter 5 and verse 12 may the lord transform our lives mightily and marvelously so saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive this was the praise of the four and twenty elders 
Jesus did not die for them. They were speaking on our behalf to receive for us power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. Seven spiritual realities that were purchased for us in redemption. And one of them is wisdom. One of them is wisdom. The Bible tells us that wisdom is not just a psychological attribute. There is a, a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit can find expression in the life of a man and a people as wisdom. Isaiah 11 and verse 12. Verse 1 to put it in context. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. It says, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Then he begins to list what we have come to know in the body of Christ as the seven spirits of God or the sevenfold manifestation. Because it is one and the same spirit. You read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says all of this diversity of operations are done by one and the same spirit. And so he gives us a list of the sevenfold manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Number one, the spirit of the Lord. Talks of authority and dominion. Number two, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Number three, the spirit of counsel and might. Then number four, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. But now we are discussing the spirit of wisdom. In Ephesians chapter 1, Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus, part of his apostolic ministry. Let's go to verse 17. In Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17, Paul began to pray. And here was the content of his prayer that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, even the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. So immediately we see that the spirit of wisdom is given. It is not something that that dimension of wisdom is not something you learn, it's not something you fish out from the earth, it is given. Are we together? Write this down, please. There is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit upon the life of a believer as the spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit can manifest in the life of a believer as the spirit storm is the secret behind the exploits of men in this kingdom. Wisdom, the secret behind the exploits of men. In Deuteronomy was full of the spirit of wisdom for Moses had laid his hands upon him as a result of that wisdom the children of Israel hearkened unto him the same way they did to Moses that means they did not just listen to Moses because he was called Moses there was this manifestation of the spirit of wisdom that reflected itself in uncommon leadership the same spirit came upon Joshua psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 we're learning tonight it says thou through thy commandments had made me wiser than my enemies for they are ever before me we're reading to 100 it says i have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation last verse it says i understand more than the ancient because i keep thy precepts there is such a state where a man can access a level of spiritual intelligence and wisdom that is above and beyond that which this realm affords show us the ancient paths Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Psalms 104 and verse 24. I'm showing you from scripture that the wonder-working power of God's wisdom in the life of a believer is the principal secret behind exploits in this kingdom please read with me it's projected ready one to read oh lord how manifold are thy works uh-huh in wisdom 
thou hast made them all in wisdom thou hast made these manifold things in wisdom you have produced this uncommon level of results hallelujah it takes wisdom to excel in life it takes more than a sincere heart to excel in life it takes more than a godly conscience to excel in life there are many well-meaning people who love jesus christ with all their heart born again but it takes wisdom to excel in life it takes god's dimension of wisdom to bring about exploits it takes god's dimension of wisdom generally any kind of wisdom brings you in a position of advantage above the normal human being you'll be learning that there are different kinds of wisdom but i tell you from the authority of scripture any and god's dimension of wisdom will grant you access to results that defy common sense results that defy logic this is the realm god has called us into hallelujah are we together so it takes wisdom every time you see the exploits of an individual in ministry exploits in business exploits in governance any kind and any dimension of exploits i submit to you by the authority of the word of god that behind every command every uncommon result is the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom if you're with me say amen the absence of the spirit of wisdom is costly it leaves you to the frailty of your intelligence it leaves you to the frailty of your perceptions the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is one of the systems of advantage that was given to the saints to help us manifest the fullness of the life and the power of god the bible says in ephesians chapter 3 from verse 9 this is why god gave us all these great blessings it says um verse 10 really not nine three to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places by be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of god there is a display of wisdom that god desires for creation to see what then is wisdom please write this down those following online following from whatever tv station just make sure that you have your note or you have something to just write or pen down this information they are valuable the bible says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh what is wisdom i'll first give you the dictionary definition of wisdom and then we'll explore our definition based on scripture the dictionary defines wisdom as the quality of having experience knowledge and good judgment so the dictionary defines wisdom as the quality of having experience the quality of having knowledge and the quality of having good judgment it also refers to the ability to use your knowledge and experience to make good decisions and sound judgment the dictionary also says that wisdom is the ability to use the knowledge that you have and the experience that you have to make good decisions and sound judgment james chapter 3 please before i give you the kingdom definition of wisdom which is an addition to this that we already have james chapter 3 and verse 13. the bible lets us know that there are principally four kinds of wisdom there are four kinds of wisdom that the bible identifies now um maybe psychology or some sort of some field of philosophy may come up with different angles but we are teaching and the reference of our teaching and spiritual communication is scripture 
Are we together now? So this is by no means an attempt to, to downplay the intelligence of those who are authorities in the area of philosophy, but you need to understand that the basis of our communication is scripture. And so every truth that we bring is derived from the authority of scripture. It says, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Right? 14. It says, but if ye have bitter envies and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. Verse 15. It says, there is this wisdom that descended not, this wisdom descended not from above. So there is a wisdom that does not come from above but is earthly number one that is the first kind of wisdom that the bible officially identifies there is earthly wisdom number two there is sensual wisdom i'll explain that in a moment number three there is devilish wisdom there is earthly wisdom sensual wisdom devilish wisdom next verse and then it says for where envy and strife is there is confusion and every evil work 17 but then the last kind of wisdom the bible says is the wisdom that is from above there is earthly wisdom sensual wisdom devilish or demoniacal wisdom and then there is wisdom that comes from above please write this down what is earthly wisdom earthly wisdom talks of natural wisdom what you call common sense the the inherent ability to recognize right or wrong earthly wisdom talks of natural wisdom common sense that sense of intuitiveness the ability to recognize right or wrong instinctively that is natural wisdom or earthly wisdom number two there is sensual wisdom this has to do with your faculties of perception this is scientific wisdom this is philosophical wisdom wisdom that has come through studies wisdom that has come through experiments this is the second level of wisdom it's called sensual wisdom scientific philosophical wisdom that comes through studies wisdom that comes through experiments and then number three we have devilish or demonic wisdom what is that a sense of superior judgment that is outsourced from your fraternity with demon spirits there can be a sense of superior judgment a sense of judgment that is higher than the natural man's own but does that it was outsourced through your fraternity with demon spirits the kind of wisdom that comes through your alliance your fraternity and your covenant with demon spirits and then the bible tells us finally that we have the manifestation of wisdom that comes from above what is that godly wisdom supernatural wisdom the wisdom that comes as an impartation by the spirit of wisdom godly wisdom supernatural wisdom is god helping us hmm. let's define wisdom now from a kingdom perspective please write this down number one wisdom is defined as the accurate application of knowledge the accurate application of knowledge the accurate application of knowledge now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them the accurate application of knowledge or information number two wisdom is the supernatural ability listen carefully 
the supernatural ability to use the written or inspired word of God to make accurate decisions and provide solutions to life's problems. I will take it again. Just be patient. The supernatural ability to use the written, both the written and inspired word of God to make accurate decisions and to provide solutions to life's problems. This is called wisdom. It is a supernatural ability, the faculty, the fortitude, the ability to take advantage of the truths found in the written word and the inspired word that comes through the spirit that it helps you to make accurate decisions and then by it you provide supernatural solutions to life's problems. This is called wisdom. Wisdom is related to advancement. Wisdom is related to wealth. Wisdom is related to exploits. This is very important. The Bible lets us know that a man can be alive and yet lack wisdom that means the same way a doctor can diagnose a patient and say you have deficiency of calcium you are alive you are not dead you are still alive but there is deficiency of calcium deficiency of magnesium and that component is in a drug or some kind of treatment given to you and as you swallow those pills you are taken into your system the magnesium or the calcium that you do not have it can come in form of food it can come in form of a pill but whilst you take it you are aware that the calcium that I lack I'm now taking it in and usually they would give you a few indices that can help you know that that which you did not have has now arrived listen carefully you can actually look at your life as a report card and you can know whether or not there is the presence of wisdom and if you find out that there is the absence of wisdom the bible also leaves us with a strategy to transport wisdom from wherever it is into your life now this is powerful but you have to admit that men can lack wisdom james chapter 1 and verse 5 We'll go back we'll go back to that scripture but just to let you know from scripture it says if any of you lack wisdom just stop there forget about what you do later on but that there is a possibility that a man can walk on earth a man of god can lack wisdom a businessman can lack wisdom a politician can lack wisdom it has nothing to do with being good or bad the same way a car as wonderful as that car is it can lack fuel when the car does not have the gas that moves it forward it remains at that position everyone say wisdom so wisdom is the supernatural ability to take advantage of the truth from god's word both written and inspired and they now guide you to make excellent decisions in life and by the principles you are able to come up with supernatural solutions that attend to the needs first your need and then the need of those around you that any man who is able to attain this state is considered from scripture to carry the spirit of wisdom may that be your testimony tonight in the name of jesus christ hallelujah so we understand that as a result of redemption one of the sevenfold prophetic reality the blessings that have been given to the saints in christ one of them is wisdom and that more than just a gift of wisdom more than just the word of wisdom there is the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom how to access wisdom We're on a journey right now like spiritual archaeologists let us find where this wisdom is seeing that the presence of wisdom is the secret to an excelling life an excelling ministry an excelling family an excelling business even an excelling spiritual life 
it then means that anyone who is serious with god and serious with destiny must search for this wisdom wherever it is and that when you find it because the bible says that wisdom is the principal thing we're getting there shortly it says in all you're getting get wisdom get understanding he said exalt her and she shall promote you she will put an ornament a crown of glory upon your head when thou dost embrace her look at wisdom speaking to you he says by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness that those who seek me early those who love me they will find me there is timing to the pursuit of wisdom lack of wisdom is costly especially in the world that we live in today follow me please to the book of job job 28 be patient and i'd like you to carry the determination of an archaeologist as we study this scripture we are searching for wisdom we want to find it and so desperately open our hearts to embrace it are you ready surely mm, job is speaking now how many of you know that there is a dimension of wisdom that comes through pain when you suffer beyond the threshold there is an impartation the haziness that foolishness brings can be eroded through the presence of pain this man at this time he's lost everything his reputation whatever it is sometimes you just need to lose all these things the prodigal son provided he had supplies his wisdom began to diminish until he got to a point where he was feeding with the swine the bible never said the holy ghost spoke to him the bible said he came to himself look the kind of wisdom that came out of that pain surely there is a vein for the silver and there is a place for gold where it is found is that true do we agree with this statement of course there are gold mines there are silver mines it says iron is taken out of the earth and brass is molten out of the stone uh-huh he set it an end to darkness and searched out all perfections the stones of darkness the shadows of death next verse please it says the flood breaketh out from the inhabitants you know and they are dried up they are gone away from men it's a long reading just be patient it says as for the earth out of it cometh bread good information for you you're searching for where bread is the bible tells you it's not in a bakery bread is found from the earth that means there is something you can do to the earth to command and force your portion out of it let me tell you what this means this is not where i'm teaching i just thought it was a point i should not let to just pass like that this earth is not just talking of the ground it's also talking of men that the secret to your bread is men so when god wants to give you bread he brings you to encounter men next verse verse six and the stones of it are the place of sapphires and it had the dust of gold there is a path which no fowl know it you know how high the fowl can fly but it says there is a path which no fowl knoweth, and the vulture's eye hath not seen the lion's whelps have not trodden it nor the fierce lion passed by it remember what we are looking for we are looking for the location of wisdom he put it forth his hand upon the rock he overturned the mountains by the roots uh-huh he cut it out rivers from among rocks and his eyes see it every precious thing keep reading he binded the floods from overflowing and the thing that is hidden he brings forth to light verse 12 it says but where shall wisdom be found so look 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 the look the 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 artistry of job he begins by showing us where some of the things we admire on earth he says their location has been found we don't have a problem looking for where gold is where silver is where iron is men have used advanced technology to excavate rocks to find minerals but there is a particular spiritual resource we are still looking for and job said where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding hmm. our journey begins it says man knoweth not the price thereof 
neither is it found in the land of the living that means cbn does not have it that means our institutions do not have this kind of wisdom it already gives you a clue that as you begin this archaeological journey let me tell you where not to waste your time expo it is not found in the land of the living there is a kind that is found in the land of the living but not this one next verse the depth saith it is not in me find other minerals but not this one the sea do you know what is hidden in the sea abundance in the earth hides in the sea the bible says but this wisdom the sea says among the resources that were hidden there this one is not part of them mm. the bible says it cannot be gotten for gold neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof it cannot be valued with the gold of offer and the precious onyx or the sapphire the gold and the crystal cannot equal it and you're not looking for it it says and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold no mention shall be made of coral or of pearls it says for the price of wisdom is above rubies the toppers of ethiopia shall not equal it neither shall it be valued with pure gold we're still looking for wisdom whence then comet wisdom and where is the place of understanding hallelujah seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and it is kept close from the fowls of the air destruction and death say we have heard of its fame come on look at the testifiers of the exploits of wisdom that destruction and and death came to hold a mic and give a testimony that as we go around destroying people we have heard of this wisdom the fame we have heard of it that anyone who possesses this can beat us hands down we have heard of the fame thereof here is your answer god understandeth the way thereof and he knoweth the place thereof so after confusing us and leading us from pillar to post he now tells us that listen there is no archangel that holds this wisdom that god only god knows the way of wisdom and he is the exclusive custodian of this priceless commodity the wisdom that comes from above the wisdom that comes from above Please pay attention. I have seen people who carry in bodily form the spirit of wisdom. I have seen people manifest natural wisdom. I have seen people manifest scientific and philosophical wisdom with the various degrees of results that support the kind of wisdom they carry. I have also seen people access demonic wisdom but I have seen a few people and I'm glad that this happened in my lifetime. People who access superior levels of wisdom. Many years ago, as the Lord was preparing me for ministry, I listened to Pat Robertson, the founder of 700 Club, CBN. And he said as a young man, when he was about to start ministry, he prayed for three things. He said, Lord, give me wisdom. Number two, give me favor. Number three, give me the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I wrote it down quickly. And I prayed the same prayer too. I said, Lord, I don't trust this in my head. I don't trust what I know. Give me wisdom. Number two, give me favor. And number three, give me the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. The proof of passion is pursuit and I began that journey aware of the 
the many shades of ignorance and lack of wisdom in my life i admitted the fact that if this kind of wisdom cannot be found it automatically or just because you have answered the call of god you have it automatically i don't mean to insult your pedigree but i present to you a the all surpassing excellence of this wisdom can be felt pray and say father let me encounter the spirit of wisdom tonight give me an encounter Pratos kedi brega deba hosso do balakata priyata. This wisdom can only be found in God. Only be found in God. For the way of the Lord, the Lord. I'm tired of my current results, oh God. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of i want to show you you see everything that comes from god even though it is a gift it has conditions in the cheapest and the greatest gift in as much as it is a gift romans chapter 8 from verse 10 from verse 8 down to 12 tells us that there is a condition in fact many conditions at a personal level the condition is that you believe with your heart confess with your mouth the lord jesus and then you are saved he says for with the heart man um confesses with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation is that true and then when you go down to i think verse 15 it begins to say even this man you see how shall they go to verse 14 please it says how shall they call on him whom they have not believed so believing is the key to calling on him and how shall they believe if they have not heard hearing is the key to believing and how shall they hear without a preacher so a preacher is the key to hearing not just the word of god a preacher is the key to hearing i am the voice he is the word but i am the voice that cries and then next verse says how shall they preach except they be sent so you are sent to preach you preach they hear they hear they believe they believe they call upon god they call upon him they receive salvation this is how it works according to scripture mm. are we blessed there are conditions to access the spirit of wisdom number one now please look up let me just teach you something before we delve into this Actor of scripture to hide spiritual possibilities in the life and the stories of men are we together now that means every time you begin to search for a dimension of spiritual reality your first amen for instance is to understand the blessing of the lord and god's idea of what it means to be blessed in this kingdom then you go to isaiah chapter 51 from verse 1 and 2 that is the biblical recommendation it says to look unto abraham verse 2 your father and to sarah that bore you for i call him alone and blessed him and increased him that means to understand my idea of a blessed man understudy abraham if you want to understudy the ministry of prayer the bible takes you in james chapter 5 from verse 13 down to 18 it now brings you to this personality called elijah it says elijah was a man of like passion so you use the person elijah to understand the power of prevailing prayer are we together now if you seek encounters and you want to understand the protocol to a spiritual encounter the bible tells us that the personality the go-to personality is this man called jacob in chapter 28 of genesis chapter 32 of genesis then chapter 24 of psalms this is the generation of them that seek thee they, that seek thy face O jacob king james says but the original translation says oh god of jacob so god recommends the encounter of jacob as the protocol for finding him are, are we learning now yes you don't blindly begin to search for truths just like that 
they are personified if you are learning favor you want to see the power of god's deliverance that god is able to deliver men the nation of israel from egypt is the classic expression of deliverance so you understudy what did they do number one they were in captivity how did god help them he brought a man trained that man are we together now by signs and wonders he brought them out through his mouth his mighty hands The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning, so that we, through the comfort of Scripture, might find hope. So now we are discussing wisdom. It is only wise and obvious that we re make reference to the personality that was identified from Scripture as the wisest man, second only to Jesus Christ. Is that true? So we are going to understudy the life of Solomon, the man that the Bible says is the wisest man. Because once upon a time, he did not have the manifestation of wisdom. So what happened? First Kings chapter 3. Shilaks kapranda katuski adabakata. Verse 3. The first condition to access the spirit of wisdom please do not miss this is that you must have passionate love for God and for his program passionate love not just love passionate love for God the spirit of wisdom comes not just upon prayer warriors but genuine lovers of God not users of God not church goers not just Bible study giants but lovers of God no eye has seen no ear has heard the bible says neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that god has in store for them that love him but he has revealed it to them by his spirit so the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is a love affair as we learn from this reference solomon read with me please verse 3 one to read and solomon loved the lord hold on he never said and solomon wanted wisdom it didn't say solomon wanted fame it didn't say solomon wanted a name solomon loved the lord notice the two people that are references of wisdom the bible starts by telling us of their love life for god so loved the world he gave his son as proof of love solomon now also loved it's interesting that true wisdom starts with love and solomon loved the lord walking in the statutes of david his father is that true only he sacrificed burn incense in high places and then the second condition very quickly if you want to access wisdom you must have a sincere desire please keep that scripture there number one passionate love for god and his agenda number two you must have a sincere desire to be a blessing the spirit of wisdom cannot come on an individual who is not committed to being a blessing because wisdom manifests itself in supernatural solutions that bless all and sundry so there must be a passion and a determination in your heart you want the spirit of wisdom to come and elevate you in business in ministry in politics in every area of your life you must have a passion to be a blessing let's read verse um we're going to begin to read from verse 8 and 9 we'll come back but then let's just look at it verse 8 and 9 now in fact let's just start from verse 4 down to 9 media help us it says the king went to Gibeon and to sacrifice there for that was the great high place and the Bible says a thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar uh -huh. next verse in Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night and said ask what I will give thee this ladies and gentlemen was the ultimate test of selflessness and a desire to be a blessing it is not an angel saying you should ask is the God of the Bible who has everything 
perhaps if I was the one who was asked that, I would say, God, get a notebook. You don't know where I'm coming from. Get a notebook. Hmm. The Lord said, ask what I shall give thee. Verse 6. And Solomon said, hallelujah. Look at the expression of selflessness. The determination to be a blessing. Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. Uh -huh. So he's talking about rulership. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of my father David, and I am but a little child. Ah, this man knows what to do with God. There is, there is a language that when you use with God, eh, you are ready to receive something from him. I am but a child. I know not how to go out or how to come in. Because it is wisdom that gives direction. He's saying I am void of wisdom and I admit it. There's no need spending my life experimenting and returning back in pain. Then verse 8. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen. A great people, he said, that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude. Verse 9. Here was his request. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. What for? To judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this this so great thy people notice he did not he keep that scripture there please he didn't ask for himself my brothers and sisters i've had a few encounters with the lord and i can tell you this there are kairos moments where when you have an opportunity that's when the flesh will say you better say it quickly speed promotion all kinds of things the life of my enemies and God was listening to the, Lord, the, the Solomon and Solomon said Lord I desire an understanding heart what we call wisdom and the reason why I need it is because of my passion to be an effective leader my passion to be a blessing can I tell you this everything that God gives you flows through you but should not stop with you if it stops with you even though he gave you it will kill you listen to what i'm telling you everything god gives you provided it came from god it flows through you and you will benefit from it but ultimately it must move past you if god gives you an anointing if god gives you wealth if god gives you influence if he gives you increase if he gives you intelligence a platform whatever it is when he sends a word to jacob his intent is that it gets to Israel. Are we learning? So you must have a desire to be a blessing. Please say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it if you can't say in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to be passionate about being a blessing. I look beyond myself. Hmm. Now, this is a very strange language, especially in this, our world today. The world of I, me, myself. To hell with whatever happens to anybody, provided I am enjoying. You will never access the spirit of wisdom, ladies and gentlemen. Ilonia, uh -huh, to what end? Myself. So that I'll have on common insight into the world to what end myself the moment the language is self you will not come out. there are people who seek all kinds of spiritual virtues not just wisdom alone they seek the anointing they fast and they pray but the corruption that is behind that they just want it to come let us make mortar let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a is about Jesus Christ enthroned that everything that flows through you flows to become a blessing a blessing me for the sake of your people and God says okay I see that you are a faithful treasurer 
you want me to trust you with the wealth of the kingdom yes lord you will benefit who disappointed me let me find you and he will trust you with dimensions of grace that you may not have known that to exist the third key to access the third condition to access the spirit of wisdom is found in first kings chapter 3 and verse 4 it's called the law of sacrifice solomon offered a thousand bond offerings sacrifice here does not just talk about finances alone there has to be total surrender in this case he offered offerings but there are levels of sacrifice where you are the offering you provide the fire I'll provide the sacrifice listen there are times that God is not looking for what comes from you you are the sacrifice he's looking for you want to receive an investment a rich investment of the spirit of wisdom you must become that sacrifice the Bible says, I beseech thee, brethren, by the message of the Lord, that ye offer your bodies unto God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of service. There are people who bring money and they give God and he says, carry your money away. What I'm looking for is your heart. Do you know why? Because you see the kind of results you command when the spirit of wisdom is at work in you. God must have your heart. If not, it would destroy you. The pride that comes from the excellency of that result is the reason why many people do not last as God begins to lift them. I'll be showing you the benefits of this spirit. I am telling you when the spirit of wisdom comes upon you, men will almost worship you because of the kind of result that comes from your life. But if you have become that sacrifice, you're on the altar and everything that comes through your life only becomes for his glory. You can't scam God and play politics with him and say, Lord, just grant me the spirit. Don't worry, I'll return back. He says, no. I have watched men for decades. I know the vulnerability and the tendencies in their hearts. The power of the spirit of wisdom is so, I'm telling you, in one month, one month, your life can so change, your ministry can so change, your business can so change, you will marvel and wonder at what you become. And so before he invests that dimension of grace on you he now tells you sacrifice solomon offered please look look with me imagine imagine that this entire altar is full of bulls and you are cutting them one by one and heaven is watching one thousand please keep that scripture there verse four one thousand for some of you, you think 1,000 is not much. Go and try to buy one ram. Right now, with the current economic situation. A healthy, well-built ram. One. I don't know how much they sell, but you go and try to buy it. Or one cow. Even if someone pushes it down, it will stand up, but you will still be angry that you paid so much and they're pushing that cow down. And here is a man who just watched this and said, let's start with 100 and he killed 100 and then he killed 200 and i can imagine the angel saying what is going on here 300 400 and he says no it's not enough add some more i want to show him how much i love him and god is saying it's not about the cows who is doing something to something that is so close to what my son is going to be doing this guy is about to give everything 800 cows or rams 850 900 950 and he still said let's add some more and he said angel stay back you don't need to go i will go myself this kind of sacrifice can i tell you this there are sacrifices both financial and otherwise that are representations of your passion and seriousness with god when you commit yourself to those levels of deep sacrifices you open yourself for encounters do you know there is a level of sacrifice that automatically becomes a covenant psalm 50 verse 5 give it to us please let me show you from scripture 
it is it's not a covenant that you enter willfully it says gather my saints together unto me those that have made a covenant with me how there is a level of passion and hunger god sees you giving so much for the kingdom and he says you are doing this for me god sees you promoting the kingdom in ways that you are going out of your way like a madman there was something solomon understood and the bible says that night not the next day god came to him and said you are calling me solomon said did i call you he says your sacrifice there are many of you your heart you have not given anything in your life that has touched the heart of god to really command his presence this is not coercion in any way to inconvenience you but it's the truth can i tell you this behind the uncommon people you see god using world over today there is a dimension of sacrifice hmm. you know most times when people see god using an individual marvelously people begin to think it's just luck or you are lucky or you were fortunate to just find someone who laid hands on you my brothers and my sisters behind every story of genuine lasting exploit is blood dripping on the altar a testament of sacrifice you want to access the spirit of wisdom god must vet you until you die the sacrifice of your time the sacrifice of your reputation the sacrifice of your ego the sacrifice of your resources the sacrifice of your intelligence if it is the wisdom that comes from above you are looking for you have to get to that point where you say lord take everything Ask anybody you admire. Ask anybody who manifests on common dimensions of results. There is a sacrifice component as the condition that brought either the anointing or the wisdom of the spirit. Are we together? Anoint my everything, use my everything, I release my everything, you have my everything, take all of me, all of me, you have my everything, all of me Lord, you have my everything. You have my everything. Use my everything. I release my everything. Take my everything. Say, take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me, all of me, Lord. sacrifice listen you know you have given all when there is nothing left again abraham take thy son thy only son whom thou lovest take your reputation the only one that you spent 30 years building take it to a mountain take your resources the one that you pride on Oh, it is by my strength that I'm a millionaire. By my strength, I'm a billionaire. Look what my intelligence has given me. And God says, if it's business you want to do with me, let me show you how we do business in this kingdom. I do not come to people who are strong. When my strength finds strength, it goes back. It waits until you are empty. Let me tell you this. There's nothing wrong with confession. But there is a mistake we keep making in the body of Christ. There are times, respectfully speaking, not to mock or spite it, but this blind claiming that we claim everything just like that. No. 
there are positive confessions but there are foolish claims that never lead to any results there is a real price not everything is a gift there are things that are rewards and if we do not balance this we will continue to mock ourselves jumping up and down and never be able to command results you want the spirit of wisdom lavishly at work in your life sacrifice so that God can call you today listen God can call you and say help them please he says you are a billionaire but I want you to leave that meeting come and you say yes sir after all, I was dead before they even knew me. Hear me, man of God. If you want the spirit of wisdom to come upon you to command exploits in ministry, it's more than a Bible school. It's more than just hands being laid on you. Death. Sacrifice. There is nothing in my life today, I tell you sincerely by the God of heaven, there is nothing in my life today that I cannot give God. Nothing. And be careful. Don't say that because God will vet you. God take everything. He says thank you. He knows what to touch. It's easy to give Ishmael. You can say Ishmael leave. But he says it's not Ishmael I want. Take Isaac. Isaac is a symbol of your future. Isaac is a symbol of your reputation. Isaac is a symbol. The epicenter of your self-worth take it to a mountain if it's power you want in this kingdom if it's an investment of the spirit you want this one is not something you claim this one is a cup you drink and a baptism you are baptized into you want the spirit of wisdom to be at work in you the grace that subdues systems and structures dominion at a level and a frequency that confounds principalities and powers this one comes from above I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord. Your royal majesty Yabone nakao Sujada ne nakao There is something I know about sacrifice. Sacrifice is a magnet. It can call dimensions of God. There were people who encountered wisdom at the frequency of desperation and sacrifice. Please sit down. We'll soon be praying. Let me share with you an encounter one time. I don't like to tell too much of my stories because I like for people to place their faith on the Word of God and not just the experience of a man but sometimes it's good to bring some of these encounters I remember when I was passionately praying and desperately seeking for the spirit of wisdom in my life I had seen fathers of faith I studied the largest churches in all the continents at that time and I saw profound display of wisdom in businessmen people in ministry I took out time to pray and pray and I said Lord please grant by your spirit if this is true let the Holy Spirit reveal himself as the spirit of wisdom in this life the apostolic call has the spirit of wisdom as the principal signature more than the miraculous 
because of the ministry of spiritual governance and I had an encounter that night listen very carefully I was there was a long queue of people and I was serving bread and this bread was full of honey inside like you put um, jam or butter or something you know and then there was a machine there this was how God gave me a revelation of the spirit of wisdom there was a machine there that was producing the bread it came out automatic with the with honey dripping with honey and I was collecting it and I was serving people there was a long queue but the shock was that the people were not seeing the machine so they were looking at me where is this guy getting this thing from I kept giving them I kept giving them I kept giving them I kept giving them I was surprised myself the machine just produces it I pick it up and give them and they were eating they were people who were hungry you could look at their hunger ravaged faces they were there desperate and thirsty and that was when I knew by the spirit that I had received an impartation of this grace there is such a grace called the spirit of wisdom where God will come to you in the night and just say this is how the next five years will be just do this this is why there is no boasting no when the spirit of wisdom comes upon you your life will look deceptively slow except that one step you take under the influence of that spirit will be 10 years in one pay attention to what I'm telling you the spirit of wisdom sacrifice many of us do not pay attention to the sacrifice dimension of wisdom let me give you the fourth I gave you four conditions number one passionate love for God and his agenda number two a sincere passionate desire to be a blessing number three sacrifice of your time your resources anything the goal of that sacrifice is to bring you to a point of surrender and death to yourself and then number four you receive this wisdom by asking of the Lord first Kings again chapter 3 and verse 9 four conditions you do not receive the spirit of wisdom if you do not ask give therefore thy servant an understanding heart give therefore Joshua Selman the spirit of wisdom to be able to effectively birth the things that you desire to be birthed through this life James chapter 1 and verse 5 still on asking asking is a very important component in the kingdom it says if any of you lack wisdom let him not let him ask of a man of God who has it no the man of God who has it is not the source of the wisdom. He's only the channel that the spirit flows through. The person you ask is the owner, not the caretaker. Many of us are asking the caretakers. That's not your assignment. You are not called to go and look for people just by default. You ask the owner, Lord, everything belongs to you. I desire the spirit of wisdom. It is that owner now who knows his authorized dealers. Go to them that sell and buy. But there must be someone who tells you. Go to them that sell. Not everybody is in need. There are people who have it. Go to them that sell and buy. If you lack wisdom, ask of God that give it to all men. How many men? This manifestation of wisdom is not for men of God. It's not for those in ministry. It's not for those in business. It's for everyone who seeks to see Jesus revealed and glorified in and through your life. That you want to accomplish, you want to fulfill destiny. He says he gives liberally and upbraided not. And it shall be given to him. Because the law is for everyone that asketh, he shall receive. Everyone that seeketh, he shall find. And to him that knocketh, he says the door shall be opened. Ask of the Lord. 
there are times that you can lock yourself and pray and say father i confess before you that my life is limited the reason why my finances are down is not because of the economy the finances are down because of my belief systems there is there is the absence of wisdom even if the economy changes it will not affect me i need wisdom the reason why i am down is because wisdom has not elevated me to the throne by me kings reign and princes decree justice lord i ask you for wisdom mm. grant me the spirit of wisdom and god says i have seen your heart you love me passionately i have seen how selfless you are i've seen how sacrificial you are now let me recommend you to a place where you can get that wisdom come for koinonia and you will access the spirit of wisdom one of the ways that god exposes you to the spirit of wisdom is to bring you to the atmosphere where that spirit is at work that's what happened to saul in the bible to go to a garrison of the prophets you just go and stand there if you want to receive a miracle in a crusade ground you have to go near go close where god is ministering the probability of you receiving is highest when you are close there are we learning praise the name of the lord now let me wrap up before we pray very quickly the character of wisdom is such that there is a system of expressing it it's not enough to have wisdom you must know how wisdom the outworkings of wisdom i call it you must know and you must learn how wisdom manifests are we together now so even if you have received that investment of the spirit there you have to understand the dynamics of releasing the the spirit of wisdom and i want to give it to you very quickly number one wisdom is revealed and released in the believer through number one the sacrifice of meditation the sacrifice of meditation proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 please understand don't confuse what we are dealing with now how do i release the wisdom that has now come i have received it but i need it to find expression through desire a man having separated himself the bible says he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom wisdom is dimensional meditation can give you every dimension of wisdom divine direction is a subset of wisdom divine strategies is a subset of wisdom daniel chapter 2 please let's look at daniel chapter 2 We'll begin our reading from verse 14. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 14. Please prepare your hearts to receive. Watch this. This was when the king, the king slept, forgot his dream. Can you imagine how kings thought those days? You forget your dream, you slept by yourself on your bed, forgot your dream, and you are going to kill everybody because you are angry. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said unto Ariok, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty? That means the manifestation of wisdom takes time. Beware of hasty decisions. True wisdom allows the spirit of God to rest upon you. There is a time component to manifesting wisdom god gives speed but he's not hasty he says why is the decree so hasty from the king then ariok made the thing known unto daniel verse 16 then daniel went in listen and desired of the king that he should give him what so when you need wisdom you need time time that comes through meditation the outworkings of wisdom just give me time and i'll bring you a supernatural solution even though the spirit of wisdom is upon me he does not walk carelessly he walks with time and that time is spent in meditation now watch this 
he said that he should give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation uh-huh then daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Ananiah, Michelle, Azariah, his companions, verse 18, that they would desire mercies of God, the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his followers should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. 19, hallelujah, read with me. Then the secret was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. You see how the spirit of wisdom works? Meditation. The sacrifice of meditation. Do you know that there are many non-Christian sects that understand this principle? They would stay for a long time with a clean sheet. Find out some of the top CEOs of conglomerates around the world. They just sit down. Sometimes they go on a vacation. You think they are swimming around and you see them sitting under a tree or somewhere just taking the cool breeze and they are just meditating and sitting quietly and then one idea comes from heaven that that defines the next 10 years the spirit of wisdom walks through the sacrifice of meditation i cannot begin to tell you ideas things that have come by the spirit of wisdom as i sat down sometimes in the night where everywhere is silent and i just sit down i'm just playing worship like this and i'm quiet do you know the bible says be still and you will know there is a level of knowledge that comes when you are still lord i don't know how i'm going to do ministry i don't know how to go about this but i give you praise I remember I say some of these things to encourage us it's really no secret I remember when God was preparing us to start the work here one night I, I just sat down and I was just praying and then I kept quiet for more than 30 minutes and there his voice came the spirit of wisdom the Lord made me to buy the map of Abuja just a map of Abuja Nigeria Africa and the entire globe and I bought all of them and he said I should lay my hands and begin to pray and speak over it and speak over the territory divine strategies by the spirit of wisdom and with that childlike behavior you ask the forces over this territory what happened a territory does not just open because you have something to say there are controlling powers but one manifestation of the spirit of wisdom can help to keep them where they belong this is not in an arrogant sense some of you did not inquire from the spirit of wisdom you went alone to start business you had capital and all you did was to open a shop don't feel bad that's why you are here and you just gathered goods and sat down there and he said no do you not know let me tell you how the spirit of wisdom comes it comes largely through scripture you are sitting down wondering why is my business not growing for instance lord why is this not write all the problems and then keep them before the lord writing down the problems is proof that you expect an answer lord i will wait speak to me and one by one his voice will start coming how am I going to raise 1 billion, 10 billion for this project? And all that I have in my account, home and abroad, is 500,000. And the Holy Ghost comes with the spirit of wisdom. You don't need 10 billion. You only need men. Because money hides in men. So, don't think you cannot start the project because of money. Relationships are cheaper. Go and start learning how to build relationships. The spirit of wisdom. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And you get up and say, okay, Lord, what do I do? And he says, here's the deal. I will grant you favor and I will connect you with gatekeepers. Start from there. And the next thing you enter your office and a CEO that you have no business knowing. And you remember that was my deal. And because you have mastered relationships, you understand the law of honor. Good afternoon, sir. And the spirit of God rides through your understanding and makes the man to say, who are you? You're a young man. You look visionary. 
What do you do? He says, sir, well, we thank God I'm, I'm still putting plans together. See me tomorrow. A connection has begun that will let her birth you to become a billionaire. When people ask you and you say, I don't know, you are right, but you are wrong. Don't tell them you don't know. It's a manifestation of the spirit of wisdom. One thing connecting to the other. Someone can sit down and your life is not moving forward and you sit down meditating. Lord, there has to be a way. No matter how long there is a way and I trust you. This is why I am here. Suddenly, the spirit of wisdom comes. Breathes upon you. James chapter 2 and verse 26. Let me tell you why you have been failing. There is no spirit component to what you are doing. A body without a spirit is dead. Your shop is only a body. There is no spirit back in it. Your political career is only a body. There is no spirit back in it. Oh dear politician, your intelligence is only a body. There is no spirit back in it. So when you introduce the spirit component to anything you are doing, you now give it life. Wisdom has come to you. The sacrifice of meditation. Number two. How do you access the spirit of wisdom? Luke chapter 21 and verse 15. Let's look at Amplify. The ways that you access the spirit of wisdom, listen carefully, is as you open your mouth to speak by faith, it says, I will give you a mouth and such utterance and wisdom that all of your foes combined will be unable to stand or refute. There are many times you have to go by faith. You are in the boardroom and now you are about to speak and wisdom works like word of knowledge. You, at the point, you do not even know what to say yet. But by faith and in the name of Jesus, believing you have the investment of that spirit, you open your mouth and you begin to communicate things that later on you will have to listen to what you said yourself because you know you are not the one speaking. This is how many people got jobs. They went by faith because the spirit of wisdom was there and they had all kinds of executives sitting there and they were standing there, though shaking like a leaf. They believed they were not alone. Young man, what do you intend to do for this company? And the person does not know what to say. And suddenly, here he comes. And boldness and you begin to speak and articulate with such level of uncanny intelligence. This is what I seek to bring. This is what I seek to bring. And they look at you and say, where have you been? When you go out of that place, you can't even remember what you said. Open your mouth and I will feel it. Are you learning something? When you open up your mouth, Matthew chapter 10, please, from verse 19 and 20. When you speak and you make decisions, you give room for the spirit of wisdom to come up. It says, but when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak verse 20 it says for it is not ye that speak hallelujah but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you i was in bonnie bonnie island a few maybe a month or two ago and i had a wonderful tour you know they just showed us the oldest cathedral and when they were talking about one i think it was uh, bishop joseph johnson now i think i hope i got that right and there was a pulpit there and uh, the people who were helping us with the tour were just explaining something that happened. The guy prepared his notes and he was going to preach. And I think something, I don't know what it is that happened and maybe he lost his notes or something and he stood there, he was shaking. He did not know what to say. And fire just came and the spirit of wisdom and revelation came upon that man and he began to speak. That was how his first message came. Can I tell you, there are times you have to close your eyes by faith and just say something. You will find out that it did not come out as foolish as you thought it would be because the Holy Spirit edited it before it came out. Number three. How does the outworking 
of the spirit of wisdom how does it work creative thinking write it down innovative and creative thinking job chapter 32 and verse 8 this is the young man elihu speaking job 32 here's what he had to say but there is a spirit in a man or a man and the inspiration everyone please say inspiration creative thinking is powerful this is not about businessmen this is how the mind works the mind was designed to birth supernatural possibilities the moment you drop it in that atmosphere where there is an incubation of destiny altering ideas innovations creative thinking you're a leader here you're a captain of industry find time where you just move away from people and be alone and begin to think allow the holy spirit brood over your mind that's what it means to think creatively in the name of jesus christ what is the next step to this church what is the next step to this company what is the next step to preserving the purposes of god as committed to me and ideas begin to come from your spirit and then one of the ways that god brings draws out this manifestation of wisdom within us is through dreams and visions hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 please when the spirit of wisdom is at work in you do not downplay the power of dreams and visions god who at sundry times and in diverse manners listen carefully he spake in the time past unto the fathers by the prophets by the prophets so he used the prophetic he used dreams and visions i think it's um what's the scripture that says i have used similitudes i have multiplied visions similitudes you can go to bed and suddenly find yourself and the holy spirit is revealing this to you like he did to daniel in chapter 2 and verse 19 then the secret was revealed unto daniel was it not joseph that went to bed and had a dream and his whole destiny played before him i saw the sun the moon and 11 stars many of us lose touch we lose the opportunity to release the spirit of wisdom because when we get up with prophetic dreams and visions and encounters we do not document them let me tell you this every time you wake up and you find out that god gave you a dream that you know is prophetic you see the way dreams and visions we have a series on that the way dreams and visions work is you can see part one of that vision in 2017 and keep it the part two will come in 2022 and then you now join it and it makes sense if you do not respect the first part you will not see the second part dreams and visions seldom come complete they come in part because we see in part but you must respect the parts that god has shown you okay god told you you are getting into ministry but he did not tell you the kind of ministry he did not tell you the location he did not tell you the dimension respect the one you have seen so far write it down and start praying over it then another part will come god told you you are going to become a great politician you are going to lead nations you're going to lead territories he didn't tell you in what capacity respect the part he gave you and put it down he says write the vision write the vision before you write the vision, you must receive the vision. When you receive the vision, your next assignment is to write it down. Are we blessed? Very, very important. Dreams and visions. Now, Proverbs chapter 24 from verse 3 and 4. We're looking at the excellency as we prepare to pray now. The excellency of possessing or working in partnership with the spirit of wisdom. Number one, it says through wisdom is a house built and by understanding it is established. Please give us verse 3 in Amplified. Amplified. 
it says through skillful and godly wisdom is a house a life a home a family built and by understanding it is established on a sound and a good foundation anything is built by wisdom once it has to do with building whether physically emotionally spiritually financially anything that needs to be built the architect is wisdom you cannot ignore wisdom and expect to build anything that lasts you want to build a ministry that lasts you want to build a business that lasts you want to build a kingdom influence that lasts it will come through the platform of divine wisdom now for study let's just look at one scripture first Kings chapter 3 now we'll look at verse 15 then we'll start from 16 down to 28 that will be our last scripture and then we'll pray now watch this so all that was happening was a dream by the time we get to 15 solomon woke up my god spiritual things are so powerful imagine if you were solomon's friend and both of you slept on the same bed you would not know that something of destiny value he would just wake up and stretch himself except that he's not the same person who went to bed and solomon awoke and behold it was a dream and he came to jerusalem watch this and stood before the ark of the covenant of the lord and offered up bond offerings what a man he offered bond offerings for the dream to come when he woke up he offered bond offerings for it to still begin to manifest he made a feast to all his servants next verse verse 16 now this will be the first test of the presence of this dimension of wisdom there's a lesson to learn here and we round up you can know that the spirit of wisdom has come upon you in solomon's case is about to be tested there came two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him this is a difficult situation right now and the one woman said oh my lord i and this woman dwell in one house and i was delivered of a child with her in the house uh-huh and it came to pass the third day after i was delivered that this woman was delivered also and we were together there was no stranger with us in the house terrible because there is no witness now so this is a complicated case there's no witness save the two of us in the house 19 and this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it that means she laid on the child till the child died are you following this difficult puzzle now and she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me huh while thy handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom are you following the story now and when i arose in the morning to give my child suck behold it was dead but when i considered it in the morning behold it was not my son which did bear 22. the other woman said nay but the living is my son and the dead is thy son and this said no but the dead is thy son and the living is my son and they spoke before the king hmm. can you imagine such a situation two women come to you and they say one my child is dead the other now the king is about to demonstrate the all surpassing excellence of this encounter he's about to know and test for real whether this grace had truly come then said the king the one saith, this is my son that liveth and thy son is the dead and the other said nay but thy son is the dead and my son is the living the spirit of wisdom keep this scripture there let me teach you something to learn are you seeing that the king was in a situation right now that it was a dilemma he was not in the room with them and there was no witness there was nobody to call only two women and their two sons now they are in a very serious argument whatever the king did at that point would go around the nation he could lose his reputation at that point 
what do you then do there are times when the situation that stands before you defies what you know it would defy what you studied it would defy the physical connection at that time you will need to outsource the spirit of wisdom notice the character of the spirit of wisdom until the word of the lord came there was no way of discerning but remember that the word of the lord which is also this sword of the spirit is quick and powerful is sharper than any two-edged sword it is able to divide asunder the soul and the spirit and this sword that is the word is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the man immediately solomon stood he said i am confused there has to be a yastic bring me the word the moment he carried the word the spirit of wisdom was ready to walk they brought that sword it was the sword of the spirit which is the word of god watch this that means you walk best in wisdom when you stay with the word of god the word of god reveals to you how god thinks and having the mind of christ enhances the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom this is very powerful bring me a sword and they brought the sword before the king now the word of god started testing them watch this the first test to know the real owner watch this now the first test was the test of love and the test of selflessness because all men have self and whoever is the owner of the child must love the child more than their self greater love had no man than this than a man lay down his life for his friend so he said we are going to divide the child in two we will give half to you and half to the other in other words we are going to destroy this vision we are going to destroy this a child yet does not just talk of a human being it can mean anything destroy this vision into half give one to the other give one to this verse 26 watch this then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king for her bowels yearned upon her son are you seeing compassion and love the moment the word of the lord came into the equation the love test the self test it says oh my love please i love this vision more than my reputation let my reputation die but let the vision live and the king was looking said now we are knowing the real owner the word of god is fine is filtering this i love this son do not allow this son die that I, it took me a long time to have this son and i love him more than my reputation don't worry give the woman the most important thing is let the child live let the vision live the word of god the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart and in no wise slay it but the other said let it be neither mine or thine so the real issue was not about the child the real issue was about bitterness it was about envy it was about anger that i am not succeeding so kill this person's child too so that two of us can now not have a child 27 watch this and learn and the king answered and said now that i've used the passion test now that i've used the love test now that i've used the self test this is the real owner she is the mother thereof 28 the bible says and all israel this is the thing about wisdom all israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged and they feared the king for they saw that the wisdom was of god was in him to do judgment what did they see so wisdom can be seen when the wisdom of god rests upon your life you are not the only one who will know you have it everybody around you will know because of the excellence of the judgment that you have are you ready to pray we have about five minutes or so and we're going to pray passionately listen brothers and sisters every destiny here is at the mercy of the manifestation of this spirit upon it I'd, I'd like you to make sure your heart is open for the next five minutes because you are going to cry many of us are at points right now in our lives our ministries different areas of our lives and the cure 
to break that stagnancy is the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom the cure to foolishness foolish decisions recycling of pain wisdom lift your voice and begin to thank the lord for the word that you've heard tonight there is such a thing as the spirit of wisdom someone is praying all the overflows following online please pray the spirit of wisdom the spirit of wisdom are you praying thank you father for your word tonight thank you jesus the spirit of wisdom upon my life upon my destiny in the name of jesus admit that you need wisdom higher than that which you have seen at work in your life it is only those who hunger and thirst that are filled i'd like you to pray in one minute and say father i declare my need i declare my need for wisdom that comes from above an impartation of this wisdom by the holy spirit i need it to walk in my destiny to walk in my relationships to walk in ministry to walk in governance in leadership oh. if any man lack wisdom let him ask of god if any man lack results let him ask of god are you hallelujah hallelujah believe me when i tell you there is a relation when one accesses this level of wisdom there is no limit to how far your results can go you see the thing about wisdom is just when you think you have exhausted a level another layer of that wisdom is opened it is ever increasing glory by the wisdom of to see the manifestation of the wisdom of god providing supernatural solutions lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray the wisdom of God, the wisdom that cometh from above, that is Shut up, you, We are going to pray. I told you the spirit of God works, the spirit of wisdom works best upon and with a man who sustains the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ means that you have adopted his value systems as revealed from scripture. You must, listen, you must be a student of scripture so that the Holy Spirit can find the tools that he will use to reveal the wisdom of God to you let this mind be in you philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 which was also in christ jesus permit this mind to be in you you must replace your thinking with the word of god believe me when i tell you that everything around your life will revolve around your belief system the wisdom of god presents the wisest perspective on all matters there are many perspectives but the wisdom of god presents the wisest perspective on all matters you are going to pray lord a passion for the word not only to study it but to have it in me not only to study it but to have it in me to become a living epistle when satan came to jesus the fountain of wisdom he replied by saying it is written even though the holy ghost was upon him but what came out was it is written there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and make you blessed there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and make you rise there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and connect you to strange relationships there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and bring you to greater levels of the anointing of influence of power there is something written that the holy ghost can walk with and bring you increase in your organization hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Now, 
if, if you allow me to do this since I'm, I'm not here alone I'm glad and honored that Apostle Gutat is here. I, I didn't inform him, but I, I hope you're not embarrassed. I would want to plead with him, even if it's just for a minute, to just come. And now that there is such an anointing here, I'm going to ask him to come. I'm also going to plead that Reverend Akila come. He would just speak in one minute, just declaring the word of God and the power of God's wisdom to rest upon you. And then Reverend Akila will declare and Apostle Goodhart will declare and I'll just round up. Will that be fine? Please let's honor the Lord as the servants of God come up very quickly. Praise the name of the Lord. These are veterans of the gospel and Reverend Akila is going to speak over your life. Just receive. These are men that have been helped by God in various capacities and we trust the workings of God upon their lives and they're going to be making declarations Reverend Akila will just speak over your life and Apostle Goodhart is going to make that declaration and then we'll just wrap up praise the name of the Lord yes sir in Jesus name our father we thank you for this moment we share in your holy presence Thank you for the word that has gone forth that will not return back void. May there be now a performance of your counsel which we have received tonight in the name of Jesus. I pray God grants you enlargement to receive more of his blessings, more of his word in the name of Jesus. By this declaration, we speak forth. Every Red Sea standing in front of you, let it now split in the name of Jesus. By the power of God, we command you to walk through dry land, to arrive in your promised land in the name of Jesus. Every divine equipment it takes to bring to pass the performance of the counsel of God on your life receive in the name of Jesus by the workings of his great spirit we bring your way the very resources that it takes to fulfill all his counsel for your life in the name of Jesus by reason of the combined anointing in this place now we pray may your heavens remain perpetually open May angels ascend and descend on your matter in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, it takes only one encounter to change the life of any man. We we'll believe that by the instrumentality of your word tonight, your sons and daughters in this arena and the multitudes across the nations have had a definite encounter to bring about a change in our lives father thank you for divine suddenlies from the first day of august in the year 2021 we decree and declare the change has come upon your people in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ as your hand came upon one Elijah and guaranteed divine acceleration, guaranteed divine impetus, guaranteed divine speed, and gave such a one divine advantage. By your hand that has come by the release of your word, we decree and declare divine advantage upon this house in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By your mercy, let the remaining five months of this year be the best of this year in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We decree and declare that the sound of jubilation, the sound of celebration, the sound of rejoicing will abide abound in our homes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the power of the speakings of your blood, we decree and declare no occasion for tears. 
No occasion for sorrow. No occasion for fears. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody clap those hands. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now just standing still under this anointing, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, according to the measure of grace, the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom that the Lord has so lavishly brought upon this ministry, I decree, even as we have received from those who have gone ahead of us, in the name that is above all names, receive from tonight the spirit of wisdom. Receive an impartation of the spirit of wisdom. Let it begin to manifest as extraordinary results in your life. The grace to make quality superior decisions that move you forward. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. By this impartation, every mountain and every obstacle that stands before you, in the name that is above all names, we declare it shattered right now. Because you have believed, I declare that you will begin to see it happen now. That everyone around you will know for a surety that you encountered the spirit of wisdom tonight. Hear me. In your place of prayer, as you meditate, many of you, the Holy Ghost will come to you like a mighty rushing wind. He will show you the secrets of your destiny. He will reveal to you the strategies and the blueprint for the next level of your life. In the name of Jesus. And I declare that under the influence of the spirit of wisdom, may 10 years be put in one month. Under the influence of the spirit of wisdom, may 10 years be put in one month that by the end of august many of you would have made tremendous destiny advancements in the name of jesus christ oh may your ears hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walking in it and that you find rest by it for your souls in the name of jesus christ the lord will give you a wisdom he will give you a mouthpiece that no one can gain say nor resist in the name of jesus christ in your place of work your homes your ministries may men say what wisdom is this in the name of jesus christ the mighty works that accompany the spirit of wisdom may they begin to happen in your life from tonight And the rewards that follow wisdom in the name that is above all names, may those rewards come upon you and overtake you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we agree as a family of faith and we agree as the body of Christ over this city, over this nation, over this continent that in a fresh dimension, let there be an outpouring and a manifestation of the manifold wisdom of God. According to Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, to the intent that now let it be revealed by the church to principalities and powers, the manifold wisdom of God. Lord, this wisdom will be revealed in politics and governance and leadership and finances and relationships and career in the name of jesus christ every aspect of the believer's life will begin to excel on account of this baptism with the spirit of wisdom receive it now in the name of jesus christ amen and amen let's honor and celebrate the servants of god thank you sir thank you for lifting thank you for lifting Thank you for lifting my hands. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my hands. 
the greatest wisdom that a man can show is to run to the fountain of wisdom himself the bible says thou art the fountain of wisdom it says in thy light we see light anyone who is not led by the fountain of wisdom is still in darkness there are people here following online and there are people scattered within this auditorium and all the auditoriums down to the basement some of you may be saying apostle i have heard you speak and i know that i need an encounter with jesus the fountain of wisdom or there are some of you who are saying i love jesus with all my heart but as it is right now i need to rededicate my life my ways to him you may have come from far and near let's minimize movement i'm about to make the altar call wherever you are we have just a minute or two for you i'd like you to run and just come and stand here as we celebrate the lord for your life it is because of you the lord put this meeting do not wait for someone to come win that war tonight are there people coming celebrate them as they come celebrate them as they come anyone listen don't sit back and say um i i think i am all right the moment listen the moment jesus is not lord of your life you cannot access wisdom celebrate them as they come koinonia is this the best you can do run to jesus who is the fountain of wisdom the bible says if any man lack wisdom let him ask of the lord the first wisdom is to receive the free gift of his life translating you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son if you're still coming come quickly if you're still coming come quickly young and old alike come to jesus for as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away the bible says all the overflows just stand in front of your screen for time and those following you who is following in your home your office your living room i like you to be prepared to pray this prayer also i salute every one of you for coming to jesus he never sends people away that you have come to him is proof that you are not a rebel rebels don't come to jesus they run away from him hallelujah lift your right hand every one of you standing in front and i like you to say this prayer after me you're not reciting a poem jesus is here say after me lord jesus if you're joining them please quickly come say lord jesus i love you with all my heart and i believe that you are the son of god I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification tonight I declare that you are and you remain my Savior my Lord and my King I receive eternal life into my spirit I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life now and forever amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you for these ones you have brought them by your spirit they have come to the fountain of wisdom Jesus himself I decree and declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus from tonight the Lord gives you a new beginning and I decree and declare that you are recipients of the life of God you are part of the family of faith and from today I declare that you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen thank you for making this wonderful decision now there are counselors waving the placard there I'd like you to please just follow them and there'll be a few people who will just talk to you Koinonia uh, please celebrate them celebrate every one of them the little one someone just help them make sure that there's someone watching over them praise the name of the Lord hallelujah now please I, I intended announcing this before I, I don't know how I forgot um, from today we'll make it a point of duty the first the first koinonia service of every month 
Uh, I know that we always fast, but the first koinonia service of every month, by the grace of God, automatically will be waiting upon the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. This is for our spiritual health. is is part of the training process to help us build capacity. Praise the name of the Lord. So, um, because we didn't do that today, we'll do it next week. Next week, you fast, you can break anything from 1-2 because of time. I know that it's usually a tedious time. Those who can stretch it into the evening, why not? The reason why we fast is because the Bible recommends it to help us to access the spirit of revelation. It's part of the spiritual training process. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And then do well to make sure that you do not come alone, bring in as many people who need an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the living God. The Lord bless you. The testimonies from your life will show in Jesus' name. After the grace, please do well to just greet one another on your way out. And I want you to watch your steps so that you don't injure yourselves. Have you been blessed tonight? Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let it rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and see you on Sunday. Your kingdom reigns.